How are you feeling, Jared? I'm feeling good. Can we I are start? burning the midnight oil? Can I here start at the something? Precinct. Yes, midnight yep. oil. It is eight o'clock. Oh, see, that's the problem. In yeah. the AM, we've been here since two in the afternoon oh, yesterday. Man, I just need to be able to take a nap around this time. You know, whenever I put my sunglasses on, I'm yeah. napping. Ugh. Is that why you're wearing sunglasses yes. right now? <laughs> I ask you Wait, something? Serious time. question. Partner yeah, to ahead. partner. Sure. Why you look miserable? You're not my therapist, all right? Mm-mm. Listen, I have to go see therapy Boom. as a court order from the captain. No, captain oh. says this. He's like, God, the way that you do your paperwork, you, this is coming from a mind of a madman. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you talk to him more than I do. Every time I talk to him, it's just, you know, have lo- you ever like logistics. To, have you ever, like, uh, talked to Cap not about yourself? No. Oh, well, maybe you should try that. <laughs> Well, I have index cards that are conversation starters, and I pull right. one out of my pocket that says, Yeesh. say, how are you? Stock market, huh? <laughs> That's a bad card. Can I see another card, Jared? I got a, a stock market uh, quote for you. Did okay. you know that stock market is the rich man's horoscope? Oh, wow, you took me on a journey. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, what movie are we going to investigate? Nope. Okay. Hey, did you know that nope stands for something? Okay, N-O-P-E? Yeah. Nope. Stands for... Don't tap the desk. (laughs) Sorry. That's not what it stands for. No, that's not what it stands for. (laughs) Nope stands for... What? Did you not do any investigatory work on this movie? Nope means... I investigate... Here, let me tell you something. People are speculating. Now, word on the street is... Nope stands for not of planet Earth. Uh, You know what? I actually disagree with that, and I don't think that's true, and whoever said that's... Tell me about it. Nope. Nope. Are we getting into spoilers? Yeah. Spoilers! We saw Nope 2022, yeah. written and directed by... Jordan Peele. Yeah. There was a monkey that just ripped the faces off of it. <laughs> Hang on! <laughs> nope uh, stands for... Okay, that's... No, no, spoilers. Of, there are monkeys in this movie. Right. Not of planet Earth. That Whoever came up with that's an... And what let are me you just, talking about? The I whole just, internet came up with it. Uh, in the movie, it actually doesn't say if it's from planet Earth or not. Um, well, well, let's get into the synopsis right Okay. Away. The okay. residents of the Lonely Gulch in inland California bear witness to an uncanny and chilling discovery. Okay. That's it. That's all you're going to get. See, I like that. Well, what would you think of Nope? Surprisingly. And for me, his last two movies, they didn't hit right. I really liked Get Out. And then the end, I thought was weak. Us, again, I thought it started good. And then I was disappointed. Because the problem with Jordan Peele is... There's too many questions for the audience. So as you're watching the movie, you're just like, well, how did this and how come? That? If you're going to do a movie like that, you really need to hit them hard yeah. with the rules. Anyway, went into Nope thinking, ugh, another Jordan Peele failure for me. Blew me away. Here's a question for you. Do you feel like they brought in the chimpanzee story because you can't make a spectacle out of nature and animals they would not be tamed also steven yoon making a, a spectacle out of the alien creature that would come up and yes. eat a horse oh for those of that don't know steven yoon is in the walking dead or was spoilers <laughs> he was in the walking dead as um, something that's like almost oh, five years old now. some people don't know <laughs> what's true. what's his name what's his name in the walking dead glenn Woo! Yeah, there you go. They try to make a spectacle of the not of planet Earth don't creature. S- don't say that because that's not what it stands for. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. Yeah, he could be a prehistoric didn't creature. Didn't do what Stephen thought he was going to do by just eat a horse and entertain his crowd that he right. had. And I was watching some interviews too with Jordan Peele, and he said the theme of this movie was spectacle. Good for you. All right. Anyway, all right. Let's, let's keep rolling. This. So this movie actually cost $68 million to make. Mamma mia, that's actually not too bad. But if you think about the cast, very small cast. It was great. I feel like they just built a Western town. That thing town. looked really cool. I could tell you were jealous. So nope, You saw that and you yeah. gripped the armrests on your seat and I went, whoa, buddy. So Nope was competed against Thor, Love of Thunder, Minions, The Rise of Gru, um, okay, those are, Where the Crawdads You sing. made that sound like two different movies, but that is one movie. Top Minions, Gun. The Rise of Gru. Yeah. Top Gun's still in theaters. Top Gun Maverick. Where do you think Nope ranked with all those? Five. You, you think it ranked number five. <laughs> Competed against <laughs> Thor, Minions, Where the Crawdads three, Sing. Three. It was number one, and it made $44 million opening weekend. Whoa. With a $68 million budget. Oh, baby. They're going to cover that. Now, Easy. Uh, the other question is for you, because I have the notes here. Get Out opened in 2017, and Us came out in 2019. Now, out of all three of these movies, opening weekend, which one do you think made the most money? 
get out. That is incorrect. I hate myself. It made $33 million opening weekend. Us made a impressive $71 million opening Really? Weekend. Us made $71 million was more or less coasting off of the popularity of Get Out. Yeah, probably. After watching Us, the anticipation for Nope was, how would you say, lukewarm? Yeah, I'd say Luke. Is lukewarm. that because Us did not do so well? I think so. I think it's the disappointment of Us. And I think people... Like you and me as a... Yes. Oh, disappointing. We're fucking God, parents. The captain's always getting femi- up our ass Feminine company, that. fucking true. friends, <laughs> my dogs. Everyone's disappointed. Not for me. I went in with low standards. I knew what I was going to get. I was going to be disappointed. Wait, why would you do that? I didn't like Get Out because he, like I said before, he was getting me to Climax and then he got a phone call and left. And I went, okay. And then I went into Us. I was just like, I already know he's going to get a phone call and walk out. So I don't care how it turns out. So when I saw Jordan Peele's Nope, I was like, I'm going to see it. Alien horror movie. So you like that genre. Right. So I was like, okay, let me check that out. And it's horror. I so like when people focus on a genre. This was a horror movie. Because what was so nice is I don't know where this movie's going. Yeah. And when they hit you with, oh, it ain't a ship. It's a creature. I like the movie. I can't yeah. believe how much I liked it. And um, me, who am I? I'm a, I'm a fucking washed up detective from the junk. You know, my partner's worse than me. <laughs> And, and, and who am I to say Jordan Peele's trash? Oh. And that's what I thought after Get Out. That's what I thought with Us. And now he's back in my good graces. Well, here, I believe it or fu- not. I loved this movie. Get Did Out. you hear what I just said? Yes, you loved this movie. I'm. So, are you proud of me, Jared? That I I'm very those? proud of you. I knocked those impressive. out, right, Dean? I knocked yeah. those out the top of my penis. So uh, Get Out in 2017 and Us in 2019, all worldwide gross are about Two hundred and fifty-five million dollars. It's not bad at all. And this isn't going to have that kind of trajectory. I actually think it might. My problem with it was I felt like there was three different stories going on. Oh, you said this when we left the theater. They were um, Stephen Yeun's character was it could have been a movie all by itself, and I felt like his storyline kept the general audience involved with the movie. One hundred percent. Because they tease you with the monkey incident in the beginning. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, When we left the theater, you really, really basically begged me to help you go go tinkle. But in the middle of the movie, you went tinkle by yourself. And I guess my question is, did you actually go tinkle? No, I texted somebody to meet me there to help me out. Oh, wow. I have a handler. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, that was, I felt, was one movie, and of course, uh, the two leads, and then also the filmmaker to get the perfect shot. Oh, I, oh, well, you said this, and you probably don't remember because of your age. Um, when we were leaving the theater, you said it felt like, did you say this or did I? Who cares? Three Twilight Zone episodes that he didn't get on the show before it was canceled. You said that. Oh, I said that. Yeah. I thought you said that. No, nothing to do with nothing it. Nothing to do with it, because everyone said it flopped hard, right? They right. It, right. So I feel like it was just three ideas that he didn't put on the show yet, yeah. mashed them together. French kiss of a movie. I love the way it was brought together. And can I can I do a little plug? Yeah, of course. Is it okay? I have a little studio in LA. It's a very specific craft I teach. I teach actors how to run on film. So if you're about to be in a film and you have a scene where you may be running, you come to Jonathan Mano's Running for the Stars. I'm gonna teach you how to run to the camera, away from the camera, left, right, you run upstairs, you run downstairs. Let me tell you somebody who did not go to my class. The little chick in uh, the remake of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Her running is horrible. She did not go to my class. I wouldn't trust her with a fucking cantaloupe. We have, what's that, Jared? Oh, cut it short. Okay, forget it. All right, go ahead, Jared. Time was an issue. This is a two hour and 10 minute movie. For me, if they could just cut out when the flying saucer creature turns into the giant jellyfish creature, if they could cut out how many times they kept holding on it while it did a motion, like we get it, <laughs> just okay. And also, did it really need to be rated R? The monkey yeah, scenes was what caused it to be rated R, I assume. Yes, if a horror movie is rated PG, you lose half of your potential audience. Okay. The adults, they go away. Kids will sneak in there anyway, who cares? So I think we covered the plot pretty well. So Absolutely. Uh, suspects. Jordan Peele, obviously. He's the writer-director. Right. 
Do you feel like this was potentially his best movie that he's made so far? 100%. Well, here you go. Here's another suspect. Uh, Michael Abels. He's the composer. Did you feel like this movie had a memorable soundtrack? Yes. It did. I like the music. Okay. Because I it's know been that... compared to, not the soundtrack, but this type of movie, yeah. Jaws. Now, that movie oh had, God. of course... Uh-oh. That's just such... I don't... That's a, Have you heard this too? I you, hate giving you bad news. Can I tell you what I picture yeah, when I hear you say that? Okay. Everyone fucking thought, oh, it's like Jaws. I've had heard people say that Jordan Peele did to the sky what Steven Spielberg did to the ocean. That's a funner way to say it's like Jaws. So this composer, Michael Abels, it looks like he really doesn't have that many credentials to his Did a great career. job. Uh, he did Get Out, Us. Other than that, he did, you know, some movies outside of Jordan Peele. I've never heard of any of these. If the music snaps me into focus for the music, I'm yeah. just like, whoa, got me. I, I, I was did, more I concentrated really on the cinematography, too. Did you like, like it? I, I know did. you're a semi guy. I did. Uh -huh. I did. I thought this movie was shot really well. Yes. It also is using um, new cameras to film at night, too. Oh, really? All the night shots were very good. Very good. And that's yeah. what I was going to say. The equipment this guy uses, Jordan Peele, mm -hmm. top-notch shit, man. And the cinematographer who was working on this movie, oh, my goodness, Hoyt Van Hoytma. Yeah. See, is he... Swedish, Austrian. Yeah. All right, and then he also did Tenet, so this guy's worked with Tenet. Christopher Nolan. Yeesh, man. So this cinematographer, Hoyt Van Hoytem. Hoyt Van Hoytema. See what I'm saying? It sounds like he's from Vietnam. So he also did uh, Ad Astra, Dunkirk, uh, uh, Spectre, uh, James Bond. Yeah, spec yeah, uh, uh, Interstellar. Uh, let's see. Is this the first collaboration he's had with Jordan, Jordan Peele? Peele? I'm going to say yes. Correct. Right? Now, this is a collaborator with Jordan Peele a lot. Nicholas Monsour. He is the editor who's been working with Jordan Peele on Us, Keanu. But he was not the editor for Get Out. Looks like he was not. I wonder what happened to that editor. Oh, I know. We should probably look that up. So, this editor is nah, also... Nah, have somebody else do it. <laughs> he worked on the Twilight Zone. Yeah, we'll get Santiago to fucking do that. He won't even touch us. He's the top. He, Santiago's the top. Okay, you don't have to bring him up. He's the it. best detective. Well, there you go. You got the uh, first editor that Jordan Peele worked with with Get Out. His name was Gregory Plotkin. He is responsible for editing such gems as Saving Ryan's Privates. Oh, cock and bull story. Go on. Burning palms. Obviously, good idea to dump that editor and go with somebody who's only worked with him on his own projects. Yeah, why like. not? All right, so what did you think of the editing? I thought the pacing of this movie was a big issue. Oh, come on. The scene with the alien boys, the timing was beautiful. And you could tell that Jordan Peele is a fan of horror and he watches a lot of horror movies, and that's what makes a good horror director. Now let's get into the Patsies. The Patsies are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know such. A, I didn't know Patsies were actors. That's beautiful. I love the way you think. So let's talk about the first Patsy in this movie. I wish I could see your brain. You don't want to go too deep. We got a guy down in the morgue right now, <laughs> yeah, right? I wish we could do that to yours right now. All right. So Daniel Kaluuya, O.J. Hayward. That's who he played. I find it interesting that they're Hollywood horse trainers, and yes, horses are very skittish. But you bring this horse that's not fully prepared yet. A Lucky. horse. You can say his name. Lucky. Lucky. Uh, thank you. You know what they do with a horse that kick? They do not breed them. You can't. They breed out the kicking and aggressive horses. And my horse has tried to kick me many a times. Jonathan, you probably want to. John, why are you living in Apache Junction with a horse? Because I'm stupid. Hey, you probably got a good deal. Huh? Jonathan, horses are expensive. Now here's why a, you got a horse. You got no job. Jonathan, Jonathan how come <laughs> you not married? Jonathan, no one's asking you these I'm questions. I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jared. Smart. Yeah, so yeah. OJ. Kalua, uh, my opinion of this yes. actor, milk Go toast. Ahead. I fucking knew you'd say Why that. Why did you know that then? Because. Because it's true. Here, let me tell you this. Uh, what is the Under sister? Acting. What's the sister's character name and actress name? Okay, so her real name is Kiki Palmer. My God, And her character I love that name, name is Emerald Haywood. Kiki Palmer? Yeah, Why, that's that just Kiki Palmer. Woo, baby. They were the odd couple. Complete opposites. She's an extrovert, uh, high energy, so he has to now be an introvert, low energy. But he Thank acts you. the same way in all of his other movies. But what other movies? Uh, Black Panther, Get Out. Wait, wait, who's, who's he in Black Panther? He's one of the characters. Uh, oh, he's the guy with the fucking rhinos! Yeah, his character in Black Panther oh, was more or less... He's T'Challa's best friend. He wasn't, technically, because he, he was only was. honorable to whoever held the throne. 
Yeah, but they were friends. You could say that, but he wasn't doing. He's the one who cake. led the war against T'Challa because he's so on well, to defend the throne. Okay, but he wasn't acting the same in that. All right, put what? your gun away. What are you doing? Don't worry. Just relax. I just want you to agree with me. Take a breath. That's more than very you're deep. willing to right now. <laughs> Uh, so then you got Brandon Perea, Angel Torres. He was the tech he's, guy. He was okay. His, he, I don't know if it was the acting or the lines, but some of his stuff, I was kind of like, eh, you know, like what's going on. But then he's like, my girlfriend left me. She got a role on some CW show. All That's right. what would fucking happen. There you go. You get a role in a CW show. You're not going to stay with your boy. Who's working at fries electronics. Of You're going to go get oh. that movie star D. Oh, one of those orgies that we keep getting invited to. No, Jared. No. Not right. one of those. So then the next Patsy on this list is uh, Michael <laughs> Wincott. He played Antler's Holst. Do you know who that guy is? He's he the cinematographer. That's right. Thank you. I loved his character. Now go ahead, call him Milk Toast. No, he was great. Oh, he's not Milk Toast. I when he got the call from Kiki Palmer, he wasn't guy. Milk Toast. No, he was excellent. Uh, Definitely lost so many villain roles that he could have played. Mm-hmm. He's just that kind of guy. He played in The Crow back in 1994 mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, Brandon Lee. Mm-hmm. I like that guy. Um, and he's only in three locations in the movie. He's either at the set where they're filming the little commercial thing in the beginning. He's either in his little studio where he's watching old nature documentaries on film. Yeah, he's obsessed with apex predators. (gasps) You're so fucking smart, Jared. I'm telling you. Jared, your brain. Give me it. Don't go to sleep tonight. (laughs) I'm going to come home. I'm not going to take. I'm just going to take a look. He's just like, to get the perfect shot, it's impossible. I was like, screw it, baby. And as he was getting sucked up, spoilers, into that flying saucer monster, still rolling yeah. while going to his death. Isn't that beautiful? Well, that was that's the shot such a, is only, you know, you yes. can only dream about or something. Yes. Like that. What was that, he quoted? I don't saying? know. Okay. But it's a symbol <laughs> of somebody who loves their craft. Oh, my God. I love stuff like that. And I thought his character was great. Well, then, I think we've talked a lot about Steven Yeun. Uh, Ricky Jupe. All right, we'll just move on from him. No, we no, thought, tell I me. thought his performance was great. Okay, so I think he did it. Who's job. Ricky Jupe Parker? Steven Yeun. Oh, Steven Yeun. Oh, that's yeah. his, that's his actual name name. Steven Yeun. Weren't you pissed off in Walking Dead when you didn't get with the Australian chick? What? In the Walking Dead, he got De- the hottest yes. girl in the Walking Dead. Relax. In the Walking Dead, he gets with the Australian chick. But then in an interview, the two actors are talking, and the interviewee goes, "Would you go always have a date in real life?" And Stephen Young, being a gentleman, because he would, he was like, "Hell yeah, I would." And she immediately goes, "No." And I'm just like, "You put the, you don't gotta date the guy, but put him down easy." Uh, Keith David, come on, why are you even answer? Senior Otis, can I would. have you? Has he done anything you haven't liked? No, he's great. And everything. I, his voice, a little. So, who do you voice. think of their uh, best Patsy was in this movie? I don't like the way you're saying. I like the movie. There were no patsies. There has been some. If there's any problem with any of these patsies, you got to blame the director. Rongo, are you kidding me? You can have a a, a studio that hires an A list, big time Robert De Niro like. Listen, buddy, I've been on three thousand. I've been on more sets than I've slept with women. Holy shit, Robert, that's very impressive. And Robert De Niro will walk all over the little peasant, and he will run the show. So you can't do that all the time. Could be horrible. I uh, okay. I would agree with you on. Some parts of it, okay. But other than that, they're just fucking patsies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go on to yeah, witnesses. Sometimes right patsies now. go to jail, Jared. That's true. You still some, did the crime. You knew what you were yeah. doing, and you still did the crime. Yeah, we haven't arrested one of them yet. I will. Oh, okay. Witnesses. Do you want to hear some of my witnesses? Now these guys actually saw this movie and wanted to talk to me about it. They sought me out. I'm just hanging out on the street Whoa. corner trying to bust, you know, you know, crying. Oh my gosh. Doing doing my Are they job. scared talking to police officers? Not like, at all. Well, I don't look like one. Because you know what a witness a witness yeah. is a it's a fucking snitch. Yeah, it's, it's true. a rat. Yeah. Snitches get stitches. You're it's coming right. up and you know the rules of the streets? You're talking about something? It's true. So I Ooh. talked to a fellow named Clint. He said, This was by far the worst movie I've ever seen. The character development was confusing and brief. Kiki, she was an irrelevant flirt. Flirt? And seriously, all the profanity was virtually unnecessary. I don't know Clint personally, but I think dumb. So he's wrong about her performance. I thought she was very charming. In the beginning of her performance, I was like, ugh. Literally five minutes later, she was growing on me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, perfect. You're the complete opposite of your brother. 
And that's a beautiful balance. That's and that's true. a natural balance. That happens a lot. You usually Man, get I thought siblings. She was so charming. Yeah. I was just like She's a flirt. What the is way she even was talking, talking about? It was like poetry. It sounds I wish like I had that Clint, I wish I could say, command people that Clint, way the way she was. Saying saying yeah. Oh Kiki Palmer style, in the movie was a, a flirt. Here's what it sounds like. It sounds like uh uh, Clint, am I yeah, saying that's that? His, am I pronouncing it yeah, right? Yeah, Clint. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then you were aroused by Kiki Palmer. And then your wife went, what are you looking at, Clint? And then you had to write this review while your wife's breathing down your neck so hard that she's creating humidity on the left side of your neck, right above your shoulder. That's funny. Just watching you type. He was with the lady who had his uh, her hand right. on the back of his neck. It's bullshit. The whole time when that's he was a, talking to that's me. A, that is a piss poor review. And the cussing wasn't inappropriate at all. I don't and remember it at all. When you cuss and you're not in the fourth grade, it's natural. It involves your gut, your chest, the back of your mouth. The fr- It's just like... I won't say it on here, but you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I never well, cuss on here, so I'm what. not going to say it. All right? I talked to Tracy. She said this is probably the one of the worst movies that she's ever seen. I'm getting fucking mad Kiki right now. Kiki Palmer is intolerable. You fucking- From the moment she is on screen until the last moment she's on screen. I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I do not agree with that. And I'm hearing these opinions about Kiki Palmer. Yeah. These negative opinions... Are jealousy. They wish they could be uh, as free in front of other people, just like Kiki Palmer's character was. Yeah. And at first, hey, me too. I was like, Jesus, she's annoying. But then, as you watch the movie, you go, she's not annoying. And there's people just like her brother, milk toast. Well, so I left that area and I talked to one last guy. Okay. Do okay, I have I enough time to have another beer? Of course. Are you cutting this short? No. Listen up, you gumshoes. What? Oh, no, hey, Cappy. Uh, hide the beer. Hide the beer. I hide want beer. you boys. On one mission and one mission only. We're hey, already Cap, doing no. Nope. We're Cap. working hard. Cap or no, up. not nope. What? Seen it, loved it. That's not the point. Oh. Here's what I want you to do. Yeah. Some scumbag has been raiding my mini fridge. <laughs> mini Agnes buys me the perfect amount of beer just for me after I had a long day. Especially when I'm By dealing the way, with Captain, you. Captain, I've never met your wife, Mini Agnes. Don't I'm worry about it. Okay. Here's the thing. Oh, uh, Jonathan. Yeah, Cappy. Are you coming? Uh, you coming to the poker game on Saturday? I'll Cap, be there, Cap. You, Jared. Yeah. You're doing a Chris Evans orgy all over again. Oh. You cannot go if you're not invited. What do you mean? Yeah, you're not. You're not invited. Uh, poker's canceled. God, you have such a great relationship with Cap. <laughs> See you Saturday. Bye, Cap. I just like his energy. It's amazing. Right? I'm really impressed by that. Thank I've been you. working with him for like 35 years, and he has yet to invite me anywhere. Yeah, well, you guys used to be you guys used to be partners. It's true. Walking the beat. All right. Well, don't remind me of that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right, you so, really have not. Well, good to talk. On average, you should have at least gone up one position per every 20 years on the force. Uh, do you think the captain will give you like a plus one to go to the poker no. game? And if he did, yeah. I would bring Santiago. Thing is, <laughs> he is already invited. Okay, all right. So I did talk to one last guy. His name is Eric. And he said, hey, I saw this movie. It was excellent. Thank you, Eric. And in my opinion, no one should beat Kiki Palmer for an Oscar. She was brilliant. Eric, let's tone it back just a little bit. Now, have you seen Top Gun Maverick? Yeah. Let's take it back a couple steps. Here's the thing, though. Personally, Jonathan... Wait a minute. Top Gun Maverick? Who should win an Oscar in that... Movie, Jesus. which Patsy pick any of them? Except, that movie. That, by the way, uh, I got ooh, it. You're not a movie. Patsy if you're an actor who's an executive producer on the movie or producer. You know, it was Tom. It was Tom Cruise's. You'll raise your stakes <gasps> to a suspect. Do you want to hear you something? Are an actor, executive, or just a producer? Do you want to hear movie. something? Other than that, you're just a Patsy. <laughs> You and your Patsy shit. It really gets me. I love that actors are Patsies because realistically they are just pawns. Here's the thing, uh, Tom Cruise. He was the one that decided to keep the Taiwanese flag on his jacket. And Tom Cruise, the red-blooded American man, was like, this is a movie for Americans. And I like that. Because it also shows, like, I'm not that greedy. How much money do you need that you need to be in the Chinese market? John Cena wants to be the next jamungus thing. That's just gross to me. Like, you don't, you, you don't stand for any morals to the point where you then apologize in Mandarin 
You used to be John Cena. You took the belt from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The way they, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, cut all that out. Has well, to do with Rio no. Whole Wheat came through our famous informant. You know what? I'm going to say something, goddammit. Yeah, go ahead. You really dogged on him last time. Your words. He is not my informant anymore. How dare you? He's been honest. He has a pilot's name like us. Ballistic. True. Sourdough. Yeah. Rio. Whole Wheat. Us bread boys, we gotta stick together. All right, he's back in. Thank you. Because he brought us some good information this time. One of the lead roles was offered to Jesse Plemons. Yo, why didn't you say the guy in Breaking Bad? Uh, I've never seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> in your cop and the junk. Breaking Bad was supposed to be filmed in Arizona. All right, New Mexico. Didn't get the tax breaks. I'm not a smart man. I am a 30-year-old man, and I have negative 11 and 84 uh, dollars in my bank account. I have $11.84 in the neg. Think of just think of the twenty two people you took jobs from. Hey, come on, man. All right. So then, uh, despite- and just to let you know, yeah. Jerry. Come on. Yeah. And they film a show about people selling meth and bad people. They filming that in a badgy jersey. <laughs> Did you hear about the dog run saloon? Oh wait. No. What happened there? Uh, Unit opened on a crazy night in Apache Junction after a stabbing at a local. Uh, it happened overnight at the Dog Run Saloon near Superstition Boulevard in Idaho oh, Road. Man, how did we not get called Police to this scene? When three people were stabbed and four others fled the Triple scene. Triple stabbing. Four people got stabbed. Then one of them jumped in the getaway car again, dragging an officer. Another officer opened fire but didn't hit anyone, and the suspect kept going toward Canyon Lake, and that's when two more agencies joined. Incredible. Dog Run Saloon. Yeah, we didn't even get called to this scene at all. Well, I guess we're just detectives. We're detectives. No officers were hurt, and the stabbing victims are expected to survive. And also, a case like that comes on a desk. Cap ain't throwing it to us. He knows your record. He wants it solved, you know. And there's really nothing to solve but Santiago, bro. But still no word tonight on a possible motive for the stabbings or how many people are facing charges tonight. Dog Run Saloon. They are still open. Now hiring. I wonder why, but I'm just having a good time. So uh, I don't say that this movie had a culprit it failing at all. Yeah, I don't think there's a crime. Yeah, I thought and it was so a good film. I don't think there's a crime or a penalty at all. I think everybody did a really fantastic job. If I was, gun to my head, Jesus came down. If I was to blame anybody, it would probably be the editor. The pacing was just not great. There was, but there wasn't a crime. You want to ruin a guy's family his whole life because you want to put his name on paperwork? What? I'm sure Jordan will give him another job in his next movie. Why would he do well, that? Well, actually, he fires editors, apparently. He only fired one. I did fall asleep during it because of the pacing. I just don't think there's any need to throw anyone in jail because okay. the movie was good. Nope, it's just, what do you want to do? You want to play? Well, I got it? bad news. We're at the end of the month, and we got a quota to meet. Oh, you're that kind of cop. No, Cap is that type Cap of captain. Cap ain't that kind of cop. Yes, he is. He wants to put people in jail all the time to meet his stupid quota. Okay, Saturday, I'm going to go play a little pokey game with Cap. All right. Santiago, the mayor, I'll talk to him. I'm embarrassed by you, but you are my partner, and therefore I will stand next to you no matter what. Exactly.